Today on the Wear Traveler podcast, our host Teresa Rodriguez talks with Jim and Kathy Albright. Jim is the author of Last Guard Out, a riveting account of the last guard to leave Alcatraz. And Kathy, his wife, who made the trek at his side when they left their home in Colorado in 1959 to report for duty on the rock. Coming over the Bay Bridge, Jim remembers looking over at the island, which was sitting beneath an ominous layer of fog, wondering what he'd gotten himself, his wife, and his young son into. But they must have had a better time than they anticipated, because they stayed, had a daughter, and lived there until the last inmate left the prison when it closed. In fact, their daughter had an issue with her foot that caused them to stay for a month after those last inmates were transferred off making Jim indeed the last guard out. He even got to take a few pieces of the warden's furniture with him, and they're enjoying them to this day. I also want to point out that I'm using the language of the participants themselves, specifically Jim, and not at all mischaracterizing the duties and titles of current-day officers in any of our correctional facilities. My brother's a captain in the California Department of Corrections, And we don't call them guards in my house. We refer to the men and women in that function as COs. But I digress. Nowadays, the Albrights are living in Indiana. But they came back to the Bay Area to see the island that they called home for a while and to reunite with some of the people who shared that experience. Guards, family members, and inmates alike. And it's really cool that enough time has passed that we can see the humanity in that shared experience from both sides of the cell door. Here to give us all a glimpse into that time and place that's drenched in folklore, with our host, Teresa Rodriguez, here are our guests, Jim and Kathy Albright. You're listening to the Where Traveller podcast, the audio companion for Where Traveller magazine in print and online. For more information, go to wheretraveller.com. And now, Teresa Rodriguez, Editor-in-Chief for Where Traveller San Francisco. Hi, this is Teresa Rodriguez with Where Traveller podcast, and we're back at Alcatraz. And I am so excited because... Our guests right now, they're the only ones in the world. It is Jim Albright, last guard out of Alcatraz when it was a working prison and his beautiful wife, Kathy, who raised their three children there. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you guys for coming out. You guys are now living in Terre Haute, Indiana. In Indiana. And you came out to San Francisco for this. So thank you so much. Jim, let's start with you. How did you end up at Alcatraz, and what year was that? I came here August of 1959, and I had applied for Englewood, Colorado, because we lived in the Denver area at the time. And my brother-in-law worked there, and he gave me all the benefits of why I should work there. And they had eight over their complement. They were training for Sandstone, Minnesota. And so they said it'd be a while before I could get hired. And uh, I came home from work one night about two weeks later, and Kathy says, you got a letter from the government today. And uh, opened it up, and it was from uh, Ward Madigan on Alcatraz. And he was inquiring if I would accept an appointment out here. And? And I did. Did you know and what you were getting yourself into? No. When we... We sold our house and 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 our and our all our furniture and everything we owned was in our car and we hadn't been any farther west than Denver and we headed for San Francisco, and it was the old Bay Bridge at the time. When we come across the Bay Bridge, you could look out and see the island out in the water. And that day there was a big circle of fog around it, and I looked at her and I looked at our 19-month-old son sitting in the car between us, and I said, "What the hell did I do?" <laughs> and what were you thinking, <laughs> Kathy? Well, it was one of those things. We were out there, so you know we're going to give it a try. So, but I, I guess I was stupid because I was terrified of water, and here I am oh going God. to be living on an island. <laughs> That's kind of funny. And not only are you living on an island, you're living on a prison. It's not even like a tropical island with a palm tree. Yeah. No. And so where did you actually live? Like, where do you live on Alcatraz? 
Uh, we lived in three different places. The first one was in 64 building. It was right above the dock office. Uh, when our daughter was due, we moved to the top rear corner of that building. In fact, it's kind of comical. The curtains that are hanging there right now, she made and hung in 1962. Wow. Yeah. I, I want to get yeah. back out there and s- see those curtains. <laughs> and well, you probably couldn't touch them. They'd probably <laughs> fall apart. <laughs> when, when they closed the island, they closed 64 building and moved everybody over to the B&C building, which are torn down now. They're not there. And uh, the reason for that was they were going to tighten up the doors in 64 building and fumigate the whole building. And uh, so our at last, we lived in 302 over in uh, the C building. How many people lived on Alcatraz? Well, when we was there and it was running, they had 67 families live on the wow, island. Wow, 67 yeah. families. That's a whole community. Yeah. yeah. Now, how did your day-to-day go, Kathy, like shopping? You know, how did you do that? Well, we had a grocery store on uh, oh, a the island? small one on the island, yeah. What and was we it had called? <laughs> a- <laughs> grocery <laughs> Alcatraz AM PM <laughs> <laughs> or just AM. <laughs> so we'd go there, but if we needed a lot of groceries, we'd get on the boat and go over to San Francisco and get our uh, groceries there was a Safeway store right as you mm-hmm. got off the boat but we got off at a different place and it gets off now right and we was in Fort Morgan wasn't it Where Fort Mason Fort, Fort Mason, Mason. Yeah. yeah so the Safeway at Fort yeah yeah it's still there in the marina oh is it it sure is it's, it's the best Safeway while. in the world you got the best views ever of sail sailboats <laughs> yeah. and Alcatraz yeah. so how yeah. was it like raising kids on a federal prison well actually I babysat the the gal that run the post office over there, her boy. He was about six months older than my son. And then, of course, our second daughter was born. And she was about two, I think, when we left the island. And our youngest daughter, she was only 11 days old when they closed the island. Wow. But that's why he really became the last guard off, because they kept him there until June the 22nd. 22nd. And that was 1964-63. And can you tell us why they decided to close? Uh, Robert Kennedy didn't like it. <laughs> no. To be blunt about it. Uh, but it was uh, starting to decay. It's very, very expensive. The salt air eats everything Yeah. real bad. And, and uh, everything needed repaired. Why did they decide to put a prison on an island in the middle of the bay? That was for uh, the gangster days. They wanted a place to be able to put the gangsters like uh, Al Capone, Machine Gun Kelly, and, and them type. Can you tell us what it was like to interact with them? Uh, no, because when Al Capone died, I was only 11 years old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How long? When, did, when, uh, when was the prison opened? I don't remember. It was open in 1934. 1934. So 1934 to 1960. 29 years. Yeah, so that's a good run for a prison, right? Yeah. And I really. wished it would have run longer. He just <laughs> stayed there. Yeah, We'd did you like it? Yeah, there. we did. Yeah. What was it about it that you liked? I don't know. To be honest with you, I really felt safer there than any other place that we lived in the seven year or the seven different states we moved to after he left here. Yeah. So, yeah. And when when we left here, we bought our furniture from the warden's house. And that's what we have now in our house. Oh, in your house now you have yeah. furniture from Alcatraz. Mm-hmm. It's stamped USP Alcatraz surveyed on it. You realize how much you and can get on, like, <laughs> sell that stuff? Like, Sotheby's would pick that up? Well, uh, they were talking about... Uh, setting up a, an apartment on the island i don't think it'll ever work but we said that we would loan them our furniture if they wanted to set it up to you as an attraction to bring more people on alcatraz right but we've not heard anything so i don't know okay other than that it'll probably go to the smithsonian institute or something like that yeah i would think so that's pretty that's pretty remarkable and jim you wrote a book yes ma'am last mm-hmm. guard out can you tell us where it's available? 
Barnes and Noble. It's Amazon. on Amazon. Amazon. Okay, great. We have yeah. them. You just yeah. have to. Call yeah. us the phone. No. You can get them on the island. Yeah. You can get, oh, great. <laughs> Got yeah. to go out to the island to get them. So can I, you tell us about a normal day for you, Jim? Uh, after I learned and got my feet on the ground and been, be, become accustomed to it, uh, they could almost get boring. Really? Because you did the same thing every day at the same time. Was there? You know? And then if something happened, if you had a stabbing or assault or killing or escape attempt or something like that then it got very interesting very exciting can you tell us about one of the one of the more exciting days of your career there well, when they had the escape clint eastwood movie escape from alcatraz to frank morris and john clarence anglin i was there during that so it's your fault yeah, they escaped yeah, huh exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah, john <laughs> You were, you, were, you were moving the furniture around. <laughs> John was the older brother. He worked for me down in the clothing room. And uh, everybody knows about that escape because Clint Eastwood made the movie. Yeah. So what do you think and happened? How did, that, how did they escape? Shortage of help. Yeah. Shortage of help is all it was. They knew they was going to close the island. And, uh, and when somebody would retire or transfer, they didn't fill their job. So what do you think happened uh, to them? I think they drowned. Yeah. I really do. And see, we had another escape attempt. That was in June of 62. In December of 62, we had another escape attempt. And nobody knows about it. Really? nobody made a movie about it. Well, you know? tell, yeah. pray tell, James <laughs> Albright. <laughs> what was that? Did they escape? Uh, yes and no. Uh, Parker made it out to Little Alcatraz, the rock outcropping. Uh-huh. And uh, I was working control center. I got the call 5.47 p.m. Said, Jim, get me some help. I got a couple missing in the kitchen basement. It was Lieutenant Robbins. And I put the escape plan into effect. And uh, I had armed a couple of the towers that weren't armed. And uh, they both seen him crawl up on that rock. And they both fired a warning shot. And he decided to stay there. And then I sent our boat around to pick him up. And uh, Scott, John Paul Scott, had worked in the uh, hospital, and he stole the rubber gloves, and he blew them up, tied them together, and used them for water wings. Oh. Good idea, you know. And then he floated up at Fort Point, oh. and he was almost dead from exposure. There was a couple of teenagers down there necking, and they seen him wash up. And they called the Presidio Police, and the MPs went down and got him and revived him. They put him in the Letterman Hospital and brought him back to life, actually. And then they called me, and I sent our boat over to get him. We brought him back and put him in our hospital. Oh. But he's the only person ever known to make it to shore. Wow, but then he went back but to... But he didn't escape. He yeah. got out, but he didn't escape. Yeah. <laughs> he went for a little a, a swim. <laughs> he went for a little swim in the bay. After his little swim, he came back home to the rock. <laughs> And how about your kids, do they? I'm Teresa Rodriguez, Editor-in-Chief of Wear San Francisco, and you're listening to Wear Travel Podcast, where we'd love to talk about anything related to travel. For more information about this episode, as well as Wear Traveler, be sure to check out weartraveler.com. And how about your kids, do they? They were pretty young though, right? Yeah, our son remembers some because he was 19 months old when we lived there. But like I said, our oldest daughter was only about two. Right. We've got pictures of her in the book, and, you know, we've got all kinds of photos at home and stuff of her. But then the other gal, our youngest daughter, Donna, she was only 11 days old when they closed did the she, island, did, so she don't know anything. Did you have the babies on the island? No. You had to call a special boat. But when they put it on their birth certificate, you're, they put your address. Well, our address was USP Alcatraz. <laughs> that's hilarious. And that's on their birth certificates. <laughs> but we had, a, uh, I think it was, I don't remember the hospital anymore. Oh, Kaiser Hospital. Kaiser Hospital. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. That's so fascinating. And their, their birth certificates, what they say on them. So do you have any fond memories, Kathy, you could share with us of... Living there, baking cakes. I, I mean, I think the juxtaposition, right? You've got <laughs> these criminals that are in prison because of all the bad things that they've done. And then a few doors down, you're raising your kids. And 
<laughs> well, actually, we were not allowed of what they said. The, the kids or the wives were not allowed above. <laughs> they always called it up top. And that's where the prison and the warden's house and then the lighthouse, they lived there. Now, the warden's wife did have parties for the ladies, and they, but we had a guard that come down and escorted us up. And then when she got the party over with, he escorted us back. So regal. Seems quite royal, except for all those prisoners there that aren't. <laughs> Actually, like I said, it it was just like any other place we lived. It, you got used to it, and it, everybody helped everybody. I yeah. mean, you know, you'd go out on the parade ground with your your kids, and next thing you know, you're taking care of four or five kids. You know, yeah. you're watching them and stuff. And we were out there one day, or I was with our son, and they had a seawall. And on that seawall was a pair of shoes. Uh Uh-oh. So we didn't know whether the kid went over the wall and fell down into the water. So we started, you know, a bunch of us just got together and we're looking all over. And here it was a little kid and he put his shoes up there and he was playing in the sandbox. But we didn't know whose shoes it was. Right. And his mother was not out there. He was out there by himself. Wow. So, but we found him. (laughs) Thank goodness. And how about, Jim, what was it like to be a, a family man and a guard? Because you're, those are two completely separate roles, you know. Well, I tried not to take the work home with me. Even though it was but, home, right? <laughs> but uh, like I said, we were short of help. And I worked like two and a half weeks in a row without a day off. And I come home on my Friday night, and I told Kathy when I went in the door, I says, if that phone rings, I'm not home. Yeah, she I bet. She looked at me and she says, you live on an island. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good point, Kathy. <laughs> well, yeah. because they kept track of who all left the island and went into town. Did they, would the boats go back and forth daily or was it like, oh, okay, yeah. Wednesdays were, you know. No, we had uh, a boat schedule and it went I don't know. It went like a dozen times a day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you had a regular schedule. But you had to catch the last boat or you spent the night in San Francisco. Right. Which, did you guys ever get to leave the island and take a little vacation? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, you could could leave any time you was off work and you scheduled vacations every year. Okay. Yeah. Now, was your schedule like a Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, or how do you, I mean, as a prison guard, you, like how do had, they? You worked uh, 24 hours a day. There were three Whoa. shifts, and uh, you worked either 7 to 4.30 or 4 to midnight or wow. midnight to late. Or, and uh, sometimes you was off Saturday, Sunday. Sometimes you was off Sunday and, and Tuesday. I mean, there was just different days off all the time. What would you say is the biggest, like, life lesson you learned working there don't steal (laughs) (laughs) you heard it here first people don't steal no i i uh, i actually started there and i started planning for my retirement the day i started working there wow and you kicked in so much out of each paycheck to your retirement and then the government put in for it and uh, I think in two and a half years, I had drawn, drew, drew I had drawn out everything that I had ever put into it. Oh! And so the rest of the time, I've been on the dole. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, but when and, he uh, started in the Bureau of Prisons, he made four thousand and eighty dollars a year, and wow. our kids laughed about it. But yeah. back then, you know, you bought a lot of stuff, yeah. and it was a lot cheaper than it is yeah. now. And so I, I've been getting my retirement checks. This past April, I've been retired 34 years. Well, that's great. Yeah, I love it. I bet. <laughs> I know. I don't have to deal with all those, those rascally prisoners. Well, I just want to thank you guys so much for being here. It was a You're big welcome. journey out. You're welcome. Once again, um, I'm here with Jim and Kathy Albright. And Jim has written a book called Last Guard Out, a riveting account by the last guard to leave Alcatraz. We really didn't talk about that, about shutting down Alcatraz and why you were the last one there. How did they choose you? Was it Rochambeau? Uh, It just happened to be. 
uh, we were taking the last chain of inmates. They called them chains. We was taking the last 27 out. And uh, we we took them and fed them and got them downstairs and, and dressed them out and, and put on uh, leg irons, belly chain, and handcuffs. Wow. All those accessories. As they were starting to move out, uh, the officers would fall in every so many, be by them, and the lieutenant turned to me and says, All right, you get behind that last guy. Made me escort the last inmate out of there. Wow. You know? And as far as being the last guard out, uh, when we got to Leavenworth, Atlanta, and dropped them off and then took a commercial flight back to the island, uh, our youngest daughter, like she said, was only 11 days old. Wow. And she was born with a foot problem. Oh, no. And we were taking her to the hospital to get it corrected. And they left me there till June 22nd. Wow. So I was there three months after it closed so it could get it corrected. Shut the prison door. That's a long time to be there. Yes. What did you do for those three months? Run around the island yelling at people to stay off. <laughs> oh, really? Were there people trying Everybody to get on? Everybody tried to board the island. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was, it was just almost too much. And then they had run a cable to power the lighthouse because we had a, our own powerhouse. Well, when they shut down, the powerhouse is gone, too. And they run a cable across from the city to run the powerhouse and a couple other lights. The first night I'm out there after dark by myself and there's nobody to call or nobody, to, you know, we had a power outage. No. <laughs> the only light on the island was my flashlight. No. What was that like? What was that like being on a... <laughs> that was eerie. <laughs> that yeah. would be really spooky. I don't think, you know, things that I don't ever want to do in my life, spend the night alone on Alcatraz without any power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. We did spend the night on Alcatraz one time, though they used to have sleepovers. Really? And we took our kids and grandkids, and we all went over there and slept over. They loved it. Oh, I, I did, and it was hard sleeping on the floor. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, in the actual prison yeah. cells? Wow. We slept in segregation. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and that's... One, one other thing we did. On our 60th anniversary, we had all the kids and the grandkids and brothers and sisters and the like out there. And we went to A Block and renewed our wedding vows. <laughs> <laughs> that is so great. They renewed their wedding vows in, in, in a prison. Alcatraz. <laughs> I want to see those photos. Can we get photos of that? We have some. That's fantastic. Well, you guys have just such a great sense of humor and life, a joie de vivre. And I guess you would have to when doing that type of job that you that's, did for so that's long. That's the way I did my time. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you once again. This was so fascinating. Thank and you. I'm sure our Wear Traveler listeners are riveted by this. Do you have a website by any chance that people can visit? No. No, that's okay. Well, we'll have all the information on how to buy your book at wearTraveler.com. Once again, this is Teresa Rodriguez your host with the Moir Traveler podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joining Teresa is Antoinette Suspenia. If you're one of the 5,700 or so people who have visited Alcatraz on a normal day in peak season, chances are you've seen or heard Antoinette. She grew up in San Francisco and knows Alcatraz history and its place in the lore of the city. And we're glad to have her as a guest on the Wear Traveler podcast. Hi, this is Teresa Rodriguez, your host with the Wear Traveler podcast. We have such a special show for you today because we're going to Alcatraz. And our guest is Antoinette Suspenia, and her last name is as fabulous as she is. <laughs> it's like an Alfred Hitchcock name, Antoinette Suspenia. Oh, that's a first. I love yeah. it. Thank you. She is with Alcatraz. Alcatraz Cruises, and the only way you can get to Alcatraz if you're not swimming there is via her cruises. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. This is super exciting. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here and inviting me. Yeah. I'm excited to be here as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So tell us about, okay, number one, mm -hmm. let's just, Alcatraz is one of the top tourist attractions in the nation. So how many people do you take there every day? Every day we take about 5,700 people during peak season and then down to about 4,600 in the off season. Okay, that's a lot of people. It is. And how do they get there? 
they go by our um, amazing hybrid vessels that kind of go back and forth from San Francisco to Alcatraz every day. Um, we have 15 day tour departures. Uh, we have two night tour departures and we have two kind of the newest to the lineup. Um, it's, we launched it about two and a half years ago, but it's very cool. It's called the behind the scenes tour and that is a very in-depth look um, at the island. It's very intimate, it's five and a half hours. What? Um, yeah, and there's only 30 time. people on that one and there's no children allowed on it, unfortunately. But it also allows for, you know, kind of a more mature dialogue between the guests and uh, the two rangers that accompany the group of 30. So lots of time for Q&A and there's um, places um, on the island that are not available for any of the other tours, which is very cool. Really? So it's very special. And how often is that? Do those tour, that that specific tour take place? That tour goes every day. Um, uh, actually, I apologize. Not every day. All year round, five days a week, with the with the exception of Sundays and Mondays. Okay. And how do people get tickets for? Alcatraz, and well, especially this one. Yeah, the, um, we, we have a 90 day availability, um, you, meaning you can only book 90 days out. So it's really important that if you want the premium tours and even the day, day tours, because um, those are very popular as well, they need to book directly on our website because there's lots of other companies out there that pretend to be kind of the official. So please remember to go to Alcatraz Cruises. Dot com and remember to uh, kind of make sure there is the official National Park Service logo on the website and at the top it says official tour provider and that's us. And what pier are people departing from? We're located at the foot of Bay and Embarcadero in San Francisco and it's at Pier 33, about seven minutes from world famous Fisherman's Wharf. Yeah, so what would be, you know, I I used to be a concierge so I was always asked like where where do they depart, mm -hmm. and especially families who drove cars, where to park? Is there, do you have a recommendation for parking around that area? Um, yeah, there are several kind of private lots that surround uh, the area. We don't have anything to do, unfortunately, with the parking. We're not affiliated with them directly. Um, there is one just kind of down the pier from us at, at about Pier 31. Okay. And it's indoors. So I, I kind of like that one because yeah, it's just, indoors. But it gets so we expensive. Recommend, yeah, we recommend public transportation That's if you can great, at all avoid yeah. it. Um, avoid parking. I mean, you'll have to pay and you know sometimes there's limits on the the number of hours or um, especially if you go on the night tour sometimes the garage is closed early so I always yeah. recommend public transportation I love that the public transportation tip and I also because the Embarcadero they tow cars at like four o'clock on that one area when it's you know when the traffic goes too so make sure you don't want to be in yeah. Alcatraz. Be sure to read the signs yeah, very read, carefully. Read the signs of <laughs> if San you do park, yeah don't show anything visible no valuables left yeah from yeah, the, that can be seen from the outside. Right, and so with respects to public transportation, do you mm -hmm. know what routes? I know there's the wonderful, our old streetcar. Yes, that's the historic F line. The F that line. That goes from Market in Castro and it goes all the way up to, uh, to Fisherman's Wharf. Right. So that would, that's a good one that drops off just right in front. Um, there's a couple of other bus lines that get you close. There's the 15 third, there's a 43 Masonic, there's the 49 Ben S. Great. Um, and then there's BART, of course. Okay, BART that, connect, that connects some of the um, other cities within the Bay Area that can get locals here as Fantastic. well. Fantastic. So. so tell us some of just some practical, basic things that we need to know when we are going to Alcatraz. Do you, can you take your own food? What's the situation? You know, I know that a lot of places you're not allowed to bring mm -hmm. packs. Can you just give us the, the you know, yeah, the, the lowdown on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you know, you want to wear comfortable shoes obviously it's about a 13 uh, story hike from the actual dock up to the um, prison building where the tour kind of picks up from in the main prison building up at the very top um, dress in layers sometimes weather is very unpredictable I mean right now it's cold it's about 65 60 right. degrees and you know two days ago it was triple digits which was um, very rare but right. nonetheless be prepared for all kinds of weather um, sunscreen hat um, as far as food goes, you're welcome to bring food out on the island. We just aren't allowed to allow people with um, alcohol right. kind of beyond the gate there. Uh, there's no food on the island, so we recommend either having a that's nice a, lunch. Yeah, that's important to um, know. Yeah, yeah. No just food enjoy. on the island, people. Yeah, there's a cafe at the dock, um, sustainable, organic, local, um, healthy options as well. And there's a, a on the boat. Shop. On the boat as well. You have food on we the boat. We have grab and go on the boat. 
Um, so lots of food and beverage options. Just no alcohol on the way there. Again, just if you, but if you want to partake on the way back, you're welcome to. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for this, all this you're information welcome. about getting to Alcatraz. How often do the boats leave? Going, um, they go? leave about every half hour, starting at 8:45 in the morning. Uh -huh. um, and and they, again, they run. We run 15 day tours. It's about 30 minutes in between each one. And an important thing to note too is um, if you have to, you you do have to secure your departures leaving from San Francisco, but then on the return it's open. So anybody, you know, if they're enjoying themselves, they can spend all day there to, oh, you know, great. 10 hours out there if they wanted to. But on average, it's about two and a half to three hours. Okay, fantastic. Well, remember, once again, when you're going to Alcatraz, you will go to alcatrazcruises.com to get your tickets. That's right. They sell them 90 days in advance. I highly recommend that you buy them. If you know you're coming to San Francisco, purchase your tickets for Alcatraz before your departure to San Francisco Absolutely. to make sure you have those tickets um, available. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thanks yeah. for having me. Have yeah. a great day. Thanks. Thank you listeners for joining me. You've been listening to the Wear Traveler podcast hosted by me, Teresa Rodriguez. This episode was produced and directed by Pete A. Turner, John Leon Guerrero, and Victoria Shepard. To listen to this podcast, find out more information about the crew, as well as Wear Traveler, visit weartraveler.com, your ultimate destination guide.